Oh, oh, I'm sorry, but it's not toxic waste. It's a few party plates. Why huh? am I the only one that feels there has to be rules? Oh. What would be a good time for you, Mark? There's just some things that I still want to do. Like what? Be a rock star? Grow up. I never said I'd be a good father. I'm the bad guy because I'm trying to protect our kids from child b****ers and mercury. And you're cool because you don't give a shit. Yeah. Yeah? Is that it? Greetings, guest. Welcome to the patriarchy where we explore cinema classics fueled by predictive Hollywood programming and unpack how our favorite characters in cinema got egg all over their faces. I am your commentator, Dom, and tonight we're unpacking irresponsible husbands and their nagging wives. Oh. Why do you always make me out to be that heavy? Oh, I don't make you out to be anything. You do it yourself. Marriage, the one thing young girls universally are groomed to desire. We got our Easy Bake Ovens to learn how to bake and our Fisher-Price Magic Facts to learn how to clean. And despite what the Barbie movie told us, those Barbie Dreamhouse commercials suggest that that dream house was a place to learn how to play house with a Ken. The only thing is, in real life, you can't control Ken. And when some women finally step into the role of a wife, what they actually get is... Don't question it, just roll with it, tiny baby. In fact, it's a very common trope in movies where viewers are brought into the inner workings of a marriage to see the dynamic of the light-hearted, childlike husband with his counterpart being the stern, no-nonsense wife. Is this life imitating art or art imitating life? And yes, there has to be some juxtaposition in the context of entertainment. After all, both partners being either too stern or too laid back would be uninteresting to watch. But we rarely see the roles flip where the wife slash mother enjoys a flippant, carefree life while the husband keeps the house in order, rears the children, makes sure that she goes to the doctor, all while doing his part to contribute to the household financially. So I ask again, art imitating life or a conditioning of sorts for women to expect to always be the adult, the serious one, the quote-unquote nag in relationships with men. Let's take a look at some of the many films in which the husband is granted an extended adolescence by proxy of simply being married, thus showing up as the more likable character while the wife plays the villain when she's really just being a sensible adult. Case study number one, Mrs. Doubtfire, Daniel and Miranda. Mrs. Doubtfire is a story about a whimsical, irresponsible husband whose wife, Miranda, divorces him and his chaotic and childlike antics, taking sole custody of their three children, which he's so close to because he acts like a child himself, that he comes up with a scheme to impersonate an elderly British nanny to get back in the house so he could see his kids more and sabotage his ex-wife's new relationship. Daniel, a.k.a. Mrs. Doubtfire, despite being jobless and going against his wife to throw his son a wild birthday party after the kid came home with bad grades, is obviously the fun parent, the cool dad. His kids get what they want, despite being (laughs) and is portrayed throughout the film to be some self-sacrificing and upstanding father figure who'll just do anything for his children. He garners an awful lot of sympathy for contributing nothing more than fun to the house. But the wife, oh pray tell, she's made to be the villain for being the breadwinner, spending too much time at work because he can't keep a job. And furthermore, she's the argumentative stick in the mud nag because the least she expects is that he keep the house clean and not constantly undermine her parenting their kids. Yes. No parties. Mom said you couldn't have one because of your report card. Mom's not going to be home for another four hours, is she? (laughs) So who's really the problem here? Honestly, both Daniel and Miranda were delusional. 
Daniel, a.k.a. Mrs. Doubtfire, was delusional for believing that he is a great father and can continue to cause chaos and disruption within his household with no repercussions. And though portrayed as the loving father that just can't be apart from his kids, he's actually kind of a bad parent. Rewarding poor grades with parties, speaking ill of their mother in front of them. For his goddamn kids, too. Kids say the darndest things. Teaching them the subtle art of deception. If things don't go your way, just finagle, deceive, and you'll receive, right? But let's not completely absolve Miranda of accountability for obviously marrying a grown child, but perhaps she expected, like all human beings, that he'd eventually grow up at some point. What we can learn from this is that you cannot predict the future. Men are who they are, and women's best bet is to marry someone who's already where they want them to be, emotionally, financially, socially, and not expect men to grow into the role of a proper husband, father, and emotionally intelligent adult. Case study number two, Juno, Mark, and Vanessa. Now, Juno is the story of teen pregnancy. A young, inexperienced 16-year-old high school student, Juno, finds herself knocked up by her childhood friend, Polly, She weighs her options and decides instead of terminating the pregnancy that she would have the baby and give it up for adoption, which is how she met the couple, Mark and Vanessa. They were Mark and Vanessa Loring, and they were beautiful even in black and white. Now, Mark and Vanessa are a childless married couple who's looking to adopt. How about you, Mark? Are you uh, looking forward to being a dad? Hmm, betcha, yeah. They have all of the accoutrements to raise a family, a big, beautiful house, nice income, and what appears to be a stable and loving relationship. Up until Mark forms a connection with 16-year-old Juno over horror movies and punk rock music. This is an example of one of those marriages playing out on film where the man is just suffocating under the shackles of the pushy wife who wants to ruin his life with more responsibility like a baby. Vanessa is shown to be the more responsible one, getting prepared to receive this gift of motherhood from Juno, while Mark writes her preparedness off as, you're doing too much. I flagged the daddy chapters through. I think it's too early to paint. That's my opinion. So throughout the film, Mark is portrayed as this easygoing, laid-back guy who's now corporate but still cool. But in the end, it's revealed that Vanessa's husband, Mark, instead of progressing in life by taking this next step of starting a family, actually wants to regress all the way back to his adolescence, which is why he up and decides that he actually doesn't want to have this family with Vanessa and reveals to Juno his plans to leave her because he, a 40-something-year-old married man, has developed feelings for a 16-year-old, pregnant, and vulnerable Juno. I'm leaving, Vanessa. His regression is even depicted graphically in the film, as even though Mark is taller than his wife, in a lot of frames, he's like shifting his body to be beneath her. This film never made Vanessa look like the villain, but it does make her look like the anal, overly responsible one in comparison to super laid back Mark. And in the end, it's actually revealed that Mark is the true villain in Juno for irresponsibly blowing up his family over a 16-year-old girl. Case study number three, Gone Girl, Nick and Amy. So Gone Girl, yes, this movie gets very dark. It's a psychological thriller after all, and to remind you of the plot, Gone Girl is about a woman who concocts this intricate scheme to falsify her own disappearance on her and her husband's fifth wedding anniversary, attempting to frame him for her quote-unquote disappearance after she finds out that he's been having an affair with one of his students. Although in the movie, Nick is seen as the villain to all of the other characters within the story aside from his sister, But it's the audience, the viewers, us, watching the story actually unfold 
are being positioned to see Nick as the victim. We are to have sympathy for him because he's helpless and his wife is a total mastermind plotting against him. And yeah, Amy took things a little too far, but again, why was she plotting on him in the first place? In this story, we also see that same dynamic, chill, laid-back husband, uptight, anal retentive wife. You're a fucking coward. No, you can't go on like this. Oh, really? I won't. You won't? You won't? Why, it's not good enough for you? It's not even close! In fact, she's so rigid and adult-like and awful that he's the one who's pushed to cheat with his bubbly 20-year-old student. What pushed Amy to certified psychotic behavior is perfectly summed up in her cool girl monologue. Men always use that, don't they, as their defining compliment. She's a cool girl. Cool girl is hot. Cool girl is gay. Cool girl is fun. Cool girl never gets angry at her man. I'll wrap this up by saying that this dynamic of the laid back husband paired with a bossy, nagging wife is way too prevalent in film and TV. It's almost lazy at this point for writers to revert to this interplay, but it's also programming too. There are so many other films to talk about that showcase this dynamic. There's American Beauty, Midnight in Paris, Knocked Up. One could even go all the way back to the 50s and see this in Seven Year Itch as an example. This interaction between couples even shows up in kids' movies like The Diary of a Wimpy Kid or in shows like Rugrats. I'd like to see a film or a show where this dynamic is flipped and you have a nagging husband in juxtaposition to a chill, laid-back wife. Can you think of any? Comment down below with your thoughts. And don't forget to like the video, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and share this content with your friends. That's all I have for now. Signing off now, your friend, Dom.